here's some things that you can push and pull for this one. Like I think it's in the right direction, but it's like it could be a little bit further. And if we just look at the reference, you can sort of segment the areas as like things that you can change the sizes of, right? So you have like the mouth area and that's gonna have a, cer a certain relationship to the nose and you have the nose, that's a, another area. So you have one, two, and then the eyes, three, the third area. And of course these group together as another thing that relate to the ear. So based on that, like you could do some wild things where you take the mouth and the chin and then you squeeze it all into this area. So then you have the mouth in here and then the, the chin right there, right? And that's going overboard and extreme. But the reason I say that is because there's a line of the, the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. Over here, I feel like it, it's a bit even, where it's like you can sort of segment it in, into thirds pretty clearly, where you could take this and push it up, and then, as I just did, like really squeeze the chin in there. And so let me just do my own drawing of it. What I would do is probably just start with the nose, and then like get the eyes in there really small and then as I'm doing this so this is gonna go for the previous critique I'm also thinking of the form of this so that is a very important form it's gonna be the brow ridge going into the cheekbone right and so for here gonna get that cheekbone in there like that and then for the mouth like I know this is the center line of the nose it's going to go all the way underneath and then over here for the, for the mouth. And then you can sort of play around with these, with these shapes. And then, uh, like, the, the thing is, if you give, you also have to take a little bit. So we squished everything except the nose. And if we just squish everything else, it'll look weird. So what I'm going to do is, instead of squish, I'm going to expand that ear to be just really big. And Thomas Fluhardy does this all the time. Um, and you could even make the neck really long too. So it's like you can like pick those sections that I pointed out and then uh, squish most of them and then uh, expand the others. And for the hat, of course, we're just going to make it huge. At least for the for the bill part. Or what is this? part called because um, I think of a duck bill but for this part I'm gonna keep it small right so you know th there's a lot of combinations you can do I think what you ended up doing is a pretty good start you could just start like taking all of this moving it up and pushing it to the side making it smaller or way bigger right so I, I guess this is a long-winded way to say it. it it just feels a bit evenly it's uh, too safe yeah really safe yeah. so uh, just oh, that, that, looks, that sketch looks awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, let's avoid being safe and like see what happens when you just go wild like this. What's cool about this is like, it, it, once you have the form in your mind, you know what it's supposed to look like. All you got to do is put a couple of values to make it read like it's the same person. And so if I squint, I look where, where the highlights are. There's a very obvious highlight there. Very obvious highlight here. A softer highlight there. Oops. And the hair and then they can kind of just have the connective tissue of the other highlights doing their job and then I could do an ambient occlusion like that right and then it's like a, just a goofy little version of, of this person I'm just going to ping pong my eyes back and forth, looking at what actual values are there, because I don't want to make anything up. I want everything to have some kind of origin. And of course, I'll change things here and there, but it's also important to have fun with it. So, I think yeah. my biggest takeaway from doing these assignments, I've been carving a lot more and like putting those blobs and yes. using the soft brush eraser, like what you just did, and erase into that. Oh yes, yes, yeah, good. I incorporate that into like almost all of these, which is awesome. Let's Hell see. yeah! Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. Uh, let's uh, wrap this one up. Yeah, so I I'd love to see you push things more to this degree, uh, especially for the next assignment, since it's going to be painted. Go overboard and see what you do with that.
All right, let's see what else we got. Because, yeah, it's like, I think you, you've got a pretty good grip on values and even, like, appeal. Like, that that's really nice. It, it reads like the illusion of, of light hitting glasses and casting a shadow. So that's pretty good. One thing I can recommend is regarding brush economy. Um, now, I know you're using, like, this kind of, like, textured brush. I'm not sure if it's the same one. But um, the thing with the textured brush like this is it has dots everywhere, right? And wherever you have those dots, if it's everywhere, nothing is really important. But if you want us to look here, what you can do is say, all right, there's dots everywhere, but let's make sure these dots are not distracting too much from this area, right? And showing that, if we go over here, I want some of these to be more obscured into shadow. And so, like, I would smooth them out and let the let the dots in the in the uh, highlight area take the show. And just by doing that, it just kind of brings focus a little bit better to where we want it to be. And then, you know, obviously over here, we could just obscure all of that. And that just brings our attention right down to that nose area. And then suddenly you just have that nice illusion of light, plus with a focus on that highlight. So I'll turn it off. And you can tell when you turn it off, the the attention is kind of everywhere distributed, but now it's focused on that nose. And, it, and it, it's kind of like treating it like the star of the show. We're really staging and putting the spotlight on it. So keep that in mind. Nathan Folks does that all the time. I'm going to say great geometric shape work here. That Simplifying that curve into these shapes with these apexes is nice. Can I get your thoughts on, I think you could just choose whichever one you might have done differently for the hair. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would just like to know what you would have done differently. Yeah, and I think the easiest one is probably uh, this one. Now, what I what I would do is probably emphasize certain value groups. Like we can clearly see a distinction where we have this shape and then the uh, the opposing shape, which is the light side, and you know it kind of gradates obviously into into darkness here. But I would I would make this distinction between light land and dark land very clear and and almost treat it like a a, a rock cliff where it's like this th this geometry has to feel like it's a wall for that geometry which you actually started setting up however uh the value groups are not as clearly distinguished because we have uh values here like this this value that's also showing up over here somewhere right so i'd probably emphasize that more but let's say we just draw a quick wireframe we have this i'm just going to trace over yours because it's good to go for the most part and then you have this top part good so once you have those i guess groups clarified then you can kind of get a little bit more complex and ask yourself, okay, well, within this group, what's actually happening that we can do? And it's very clear, it's it's going from dark to light in its own way, right? And it's okay to let that bounce light, you know, uh, contaminate that dark value group. So I'm gonna take a note of that saying, okay, well, it's very clear and obvious, it's gonna be dark here and then light there. And I'm going to actually emphasize that as a painter. I want to on a very clear gradient there, while at the same time maintaining this, let's say, cliff wall. And you know, this this whole concept can be applied to any any grouping of hair. Uh, you know, you could kind of just distill it down to their basic shapes. So, having said that, that's what I'm going to keep in mind. Let's move it aside, and then I'll quickly repaint it. And the way I'll do it is actually I make it dark here. And I'm going to actually paint it over the whole thing, like this. Now let's make it a little bit darker. Just to get that gradient in. Now once I have that, then I'm going to carve the uh, silhouette shape here. And then um, the top side. Now the top side, I'm going to make sure the values are all going to be brighter than this. I won't let anything that's this bright contaminate the light area. All right, now we can take an even brighter color and then squint and see where these highlights are. All 
and then look at this area and then squint and see how those shapes are actually working. So we have a motion like this. Let's go a little bit darker. And then let's let that bounce light kind of catch a little bit here. Um, and so this is how it's set it up. Once I have that set up, then I'd go in there and actually paint within this value group the details. Actually, it is a little bit darker in some of these crevices, but... But the key would be make sure you separate the different faces, or let's say planes, and then carve afterward. And watch me get carried away with this, because that's what I like to do. Let's grab some of these highlights. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of how I do it. Um, I don't think I have the energy to do the whole thing, but does that, does that help? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You can kind of see the distinction of, of why that works.